Hello, I'm Herm Gailey here with a colt we call Mike. He is the second horse we bought at the open box rafter sale in 2019. He and the filly that you may have seen in the Scary Objects video are both about 14 months old. They both stand about 14 hands. They are real nice horses to be around, trainable, sensible, and substantial. Uh, what we were looking for when we went out there Please give these horses a consideration in their upcoming sale in September of 2020. His name is Mike because of our friend Mike Hancock. He is Hancock bred on the bottom side, so it just seemed logical to name him after an old friend who we knew very well years back and don't see as much as we'd like to now. So, at the request of Dana Graft, to whom I always listen, we're going to do a a couple of videos on loading young horses. This one here has been loaded. He was loaded, trained to load. Uh, he was hauled in here, obviously, but that was more of a get him on the trailer, bring him in, hope it works, and it did. Back around the first of the year, he was due to be gelded. Uh, I worked with him and got him to where he was reliable loading. We hauled him to the vet, got him uh, operated on, and Brought him back, that's his total hauling experience, but he's been on, on and off the trailer lots of times. So, what we're going to do is show how the process holds with a horse that's been trained to go on the trailer, not just tossed on and then you hope they learn from repetition because you may not repeat the process as often as you'd like to. So, spend some time with him, which we'll replicate here today with our other horse uh, who has not been exposed. So for now, just to show that this horse will load despite having time off, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. He has not been loaded since December. Uh, he's a sensitive guy, but he's a good guy. Since December of 2019, it's about seven months ago. Uh, I have to say that the last time he got on a trailer, he came home minus his testicles. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to get back onto a trailer under those circumstances, but let's see if he connects those dots or whether he just walks on like he should. So this is live. I just wanted to test and see if the program has worked. All I'm going to do is walk him up to the trailer like I expect him to load. And in fact, I do. And we'll look at the different components and go with it. Your horse certainly needs to load properly, or to load properly, he needs to lead, and he needs to be committed to following. The next thing that they absolutely need to do is back up softly, quietly, and I never stop backing and turn them until they back at least the horse length beyond the end of the ramp or beyond the step down. That way they don't get the milling around as soon as they get off the trailer. So that's what I was hoping would happen, and that's why I spend time and recommend that everybody spend time teaching their horse to load, not just loading them and doing it repetitively but without any organization. So we'll get the filly out now who has had no experience with the trailer except hauling in here and we'll see how it works with her if we make a live attempt to show her how to get on the trailer. We'll be right back. So we're here with Josie, the other open box rafter ranch filly that was also in our Scary Objects video. She is 14 months old and she has not been loaded on the trailer previously except to come in here. Uh, and that was sort of a do your best, get on the trailer, hope for the best. It came out fine, but I really haven't had the opportunity to introduce her to the trailer. So what we're going to do is literally that. We're going to introduce her to the trailer. We're not going to pretend to get anything like a finished job on her. I would be very happy if I got her to walk on the trailer. I probably won't 
secure her in the trailer or make her dwell in there for any length of time. I like to do this over a number of days so that it becomes a habit. So what we'll do very shortly is we'll begin the process of showing what we do to introduce the horse to the trailer. Now there are a couple of tools that you need that are going to help you with this process. First of all, you need a horse that will drive away from you and that will go around you. Uh, this could be better with her. I'm not a big one for anything that looks even vaguely like lunging, but there are times when it's useful and typically I would have a young horse a little more advanced than she is. She's doing for fine for what she's had done, but she's probably not as soft or as round as she could be. She'll yield around, that's worthwhile. The other thing that's important is she should back up. always awkward when you get a horse on the trailer and then they don't want to back up they get rattled over that or I vividly remember having a horse in a two-horse trailer where another big old guy and I literally dragged the horse off by by his tail because he just wouldn't step back you don't ever want to have that happen. so having them to where they back up sure does help so that's something useful the other thing that I would typically do is I will drive them between myself and the fence to where they learn to go in a confined space. And I'm probably not going to demonstrate that right now, but let's go ahead and in a way we're going to do that with her on the trailer. To begin the process, I'm just going to show her the trailer. And there's a little bit of grain in the bucket there. I'm going to let her go up and if she's interested, have a bite, have a little snack. Not very macho but it helps, and that's the only thing that matters to me. Uh, you certainly wean them off the feed pretty quickly, but at the beginning, it's okay to do this. Give them a little incentive. And these horses, these South Dakota horses like to eat. I think they come from generations of, you know, shifting for themselves, and even though they're young, they don't miss a meal. So let's just walk her up here and let her visualize this. There you go. That's a good start. That's a real good start. Let her have a bite to eat, and then I'll back her away. Then I'm just going to relax myself. I ask her if she wants to come up here and on another sample of that feed. I would kind of prefer if she actually had her feet up on the ramp, if she'll do that. So I'll just put the feet up there and see if she'll reach up and get it. Now, if I just wanted to make myself feel good, I could probably coax her in the trailer. I just have that feeling. That's not just about loading her today. It's about teaching her to load for the rest of her life. So let's do something. Now you're not going to make a mess. So we'll back away again. And we'll begin sort of an odd process. It probably is different from what a lot of people do. I'm just going to drive her around me. looking at that grain and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get relaxed and let her kind of leak that direction. Look at that grain. Yeah. See that? In other words, what I'm doing is letting her pull away from me a bit in the direction of the grain and the trailer. So that she begins to think that that may be the best game in town. And out here, what I'll actually do is I'll relax there, then I'll drive her this, this way, then I'll relax there, and see how she's getting almost obnoxious about it. 
I'll let her be a little obnoxious about it. Now I'm going to let her escape. She's going to escape the circle and go to the trail. So you can see why going around is a good thing for this process. And you can see that by letting her misbehave, by letting her leap, she's getting what she thinks she wants, and that's the grain. And I'm getting what I want, and that's to get her on the trail. So I'm going to put it up there a little further. The critical stage on all of this is getting the horse to where they're willing to put their head and neck inside the trailer. Once you've got that, they get acclimated to what's in there and the whole process usually goes pretty easily. So I'll move her around. And you may notice I'm a little further away from the trailer now. Because I want her to really crave that trailer. This is the hard part. Well, there's the easy part. Here comes the hard part. Here comes the easy part. So we've got the front half of her head in the trailer. Now I don't put much grain in that bucket because they're going to spill it. So I'm going to have to reload my gun. Put it a little deeper in the trailer. Sorry for the board butt shop. Well, if I can pull off the trailer, I'll put this in. Oh, you don't get to get out of there until I tell you. That's a big prize. You don't get it that easy. So we're going to drive her around a little bit. And you have to make fewer rev revolutions as you go. Here we go. We're building curiosity, we've got a reward, we're building confidence. And now I put that a little deeper in the trailer. Back her away. You always want to back them away. It gives you an opportunity to work on that backup that you're going to need after that. Get a little bit farther from the trailer. There's the hard part. There's the easy part. There's the hard part. There's the easy part. And this is sort of the, the tipping point. She's got to get her whole head and shoulders up there to get that train. I'm going to give her the time to think about it. She may tip that train over. That's okay. There we go. I'll let her dwell in there. And if she backs off, God bless her. It's another opportunity for her to go back on. These young horses, they'll back off and chew. Then they'll think better of it. You want to go back up there and eat some more? You done chewing? And you want them to back out softly. You don't want your horse rushing in the trailer. Now, I'm not going to move the bucket this time because she was a little hesitant that time. So we'll perfect it at that distance. 
into the trailer and then move on. Make it a little harder. Make it a little easier. Make it a little harder. Make it a little easier. See if he's going to drive me to the drone trailer. I'm not going to let you go on that trailer. You're not going to drag me in the trailer, you no good thing. Oh, maybe so. You're not going to find anything to eat out there. There you go. You get the mouthful. She backs off, but not as far. Because she's already thinking about that next helping. So now I'm going to move it a little farther in. I may have overdone it a little bit, we'll find out. So she's learning to handle the ramp, she's learning to back up, she's learning to put her head, neck and shoulders in, she's learning to crave going in the trailer. She's doing it without me dragging her from the front. Now. Very shortly, I will start leading her in the trailer because these slant load trailers, it just works better to lead them in except for your last stall, which is why you want to have your horse to where they, they will drive on. Because that last one, you obviously can't lead your horse in. So this tool could be better as you can see, but even though it's a hammer with a broken handle, we're still getting the nail driven. Lose track of that. There. there you go. There you go. Now what I'd like to be able to do is to not have to go up there with it. Now the fact is, there's a lot of times in this process where I'm putting myself in a position where I could get kicked. I just sort of make an executive decision whether it's safe or not. There's some horses I'd be much more cautious with. I'd drive them away from a longer distance. I'd be more defensive. And someday I may pay the piper, but I'm willing to bet that if I read my horse right, I'll get through the rest of this lifetime with horses without getting my head kicked off. Now we're getting up deep enough in the trailer that what I'm going to do is commence to lead her up to get her drain. We'll see how that goes. they get their whole body in, it's a little more challenging to back them out for a little while until they figure out they've got a target and that's the open door. So we'll see if she wants to walk back on here.
and the whole process is getting progressively easier. Now, if I was at a horse expo trying to earn a check for doing amazing things, I would do a whole lot more with her and I'd get her to where she'd run on there without me helping her. We'll do all of those things, but we don't need to do that today. We're at a point, it's a good place to stop. Now, I would not say, and now she's ready to go home. I'd say she's ready for her next loading lesson. And typically, I'll work with them three or four, maybe five times. Let them go in the trailer, let them get to where you can secure them in there, get them in there with another horse, to where they get very comfortable with the process before I haul them anywhere. So, the biggest mistake people make is the day of the big trail ride, they decide to load old Poncho who hasn't been on the trailer maybe for years, and maybe he didn't like it when he was, and they have a problem. But they get some fella named Wayne, usually, to get behind him and whack him on the ass with a broom and he goes on. And they think they got it down. So now they need Wayne and a broom that they can go to, go to the trail ride. Next time they need Wayne and his brother Daryl because it's getting worse. And after a bit, Wayne's in the hospital, Daryl loses a thumb, and the broom's broken, and it would have been better to just teach your horse to load. So with all due respect to, to Wayne and Daryl, I'll let them stay home. One thing I don't have, I don't want, and I don't think I really need is help. Never count on help. Also, I don't have tools. Uh, this would be easier with the tow line that you could sort of guide them in with, but you don't want to have a tow line involved in this, and maybe they get dependent on it. You could use a training stick or a, or a uh, lunge whip. Sure, that would work, but if you leave it home and it's part of their working mechanism, that becomes a problem later. So I just want the things that you typically have in your hands when you load your horse. When I do start to haul them, I want to haul, suppose this filly needs to go to the vet clinic. I'm going to load an old gelding with her so she doesn't have to go down there alone. He can get a ride on the trailer and eat some alfalfa hay, and she gets some company at the better experience. So think about building your horse for the rest of their life. You know, if it's a nice horse, they deserve a chance, and it makes it better for you. Take a little time in advance, it all works out, and then you never have to worry about this again. I guess she's relaxed. So, that's the beginning of the loading process. If there's great public demand, we'll show another session. But once you get to this point, it gets a little hard to mess it up. It's the critical time is getting them to go on, get their head and neck on, and then step the rest of the way on the trailer. So hopefully that's been of interest. Uh, I really like to have a horse that loads well. There's nothing worse than being the last person at a horse show and realizing that you've got a horse that you need help with and Wayne's drunk and Daryl's in jail. So that's how I would teach a horse to start the loading process. And we'll see you next time.